of their, their product indicates that piece to piece consistency is now the name of the game in quality. It's now what you have to do to achieve, to be competitive in the world market in the area of quality. So quality no longer is make it the blueprint or specification. Quality is never ending improvement. We knew our competition was tough, but we weren't sure just how tough. The study showed we were good, but it showed they were damn good. Over the past few years, all of us in the automotive business have experienced some real shocks. A lot of the truths that we had accepted with little or no question have been challenged, and many of them having, haven't stood up under rigorous, and in some cases, not so rigorous analysis. The tough competition we faced has caused us to rethink some of the basics of the business. For me personally, the results of the study that you are about to see, which was conducted by Ron Kaseya and his team at the Batavia Transaxle plant, destroyed one of the basic truths about the business that I had accepted long ago. Their conclusion was building parts to print isn't good enough. For most of us in the technical and manufacturing end of the business, one of our big struggles has been to get parts to print or to find a way of getting or giving a deviation to cover the parts being produced. Never in the 31 years I've been in this business have I ever been asked or have I ever asked to tighten the tolerance. Everybody knows that the engineer asks for tolerances twice as tight as he needs because chances are the manufacturing guy will build it to print only part of the time at best. When I took over powertrain and chassis operations a little over four years ago, my quality objective was to make sure we were building everything to print or to make sure that we had an authorized engineering deviation. In some of the plants, I couldn't even find out if we were building to print. What Ron and his team learned is that while we've been making great progress in meeting my original objective of building to print, our not-so-friendly competition was making great strides in building uniform parts. Every part, just like the part ahead of it, and just like the part following, with very little variation. While we were arguing about how good the parts had to be, they were working hard on making them all the same. We worried about specifications, they worried about uniformity. While we were satisfied and proud if we were to print and then worried about keeping it to print, they started with the part to print and worked on continuous improvement in the uniformity of the parts. Control, uniformity, continuous improvement. Ron will give you a specific example of how the superior uniformity on the parts of our competitor, particularly the valve body, significantly improved the function of the product we gave the customer. I am absolutely convinced that they have a superior approach. Think of the significant improvements we could make in fits, function, cost, weight, in virtually every aspect of our product if we could be assured that every part was an exact copy or with very little variation. I am personally committed to this approach. If we are to be competitive, we must start with processes under statistical control and dedicate ourselves to continuous improvement and the uniformity of the parts being produced. 
I'm sure that when you've heard Ron's story, you too will be convinced that it can and it must be done. Thank you. Historically in our business, we've always said there, it's, your, it's our responsibility in the plant to make things to blueprint, to specification, to gauges, to acceptance standards, to deviations. And that was the quality philosophy we built Batavia around. And we think we did a pretty good job to start with on making it to print and making it to specification and making it to test, uh, test stand parameters. The quality of the ATX transmission as measured by conformance to blueprint has been excellent since our launch. We since have learned, however, that quality as measured by our customers is dependent on less piece-to-piece -piece variation in the assemblies. That is key to the performance of an automatic transmission. As you can see, by looking at this particular component, which is the main control of the transmission, it functions as the brain, the, the component that makes the transmission shift gears. Piece-to-piece -piece variation in these valves and the bores within the body of the main control is critical, and it must be maintained in a very tight tolerance. The less variation there is between piece to piece, the more consistent the transmission will perform. Batavia is unique in that we face off directly with foreign competition, making the exact same transmission that is made at Batavia. We learned from very early experience with customers that they accepted the transmission made by the foreign competition better than ours. We set out to find out why. We procured a small sample of transmissions and tore them down and analyzed them for quality, again, as measured in conformance to blueprint. It was discovered during that analysis that they also had better quality as measured in piece-to-piece -piece variation, a significant point, explaining again why their transmission was accepted as performing better than the Batavia-produced ATX transmission. Conformance to blueprint was excellent. Conformance to blueprint of the Batavia transmission is excellent, but more piece-to-piece -piece variation is observed. We knew our competition was tough, but we weren't sure just how tough. The study showed we were good, but it showed they were damn good. The transmissions functioned one like the other. This lack of variation comes through in customer acceptance and what they perceive to be as quality. Um, their contamination levels are lower than ours. You see very few chips and burrs, very few nicks, and significantly better microfinishes in both the functional and the non-functional areas of our product. There was one particular uh, part that we looked at, uh, the valve body, and we were checking an inside diameter of a bore. I had a floor inspector making the checks, and as he went to the job and began to use the gauge, which is a very sensitive air electronic piece of equipment. He put the first offshore unit on, and as he gauged the part, uh, it showed right on the low limit of the gauge. As he rotated the part to look for run out, he found none. After several more checks, he was getting the exact same reading on each part, so he s stopped gauging and got his gauge masters out to verify that the gauge was working correctly. Uh, it was mastered correctly, so he resumed his checks again, and all ten pieces checked in the exact same place with absolutely no run out and no variability, which just seemed amazing. He thought the gauge was broken and called a, in a request for a gauge repairman who came out and verified that the gauge was indeed working and that the quality level of that part that was indicated in the checks was indeed true. You try to determine what causes that consistency. So you take it, your competition's valve body apart and you measure some things. You measure the size of the bore and you record it. You measure the size of the valve and you record it. And you measure spring loads. You also measure microfinish. And on the 10 competitive units that we looked at, we discovered that our competition uses about 27% of the tolerance for all those, com those uh, components that I described, springs, 
bore, micro finish, size of the valve and size of the bore. Now that piece to piece consistency allows that valve body to function more consistently when it gets in the test stand and when the result it gets in the customer's car. We did the same thing for Batavia. A, a wider spread indicated we had some things to do. It indicated to us that we were that on our valves we use 70% of the tolerance. Now that's significantly higher than I would have imagined. And the kind of processing equipment we have in Batavia would indicate that we could do much better and are working on it and are getting better. And we're in the process now of going through a, a complete analysis of our grinding process and working with our spring suppliers so that we can get the kind of consistency that our competition has. Then once we achieve that consistency, we can manage our product. Our competition manages the product. We can manage our product to make bores on the high side, valves on the low side, have mean dimension on the springs, and we'll get as good a functioning main control in test and in what our customer sees as our competition does. I guess the bottom line that we learned at Batavia is that meaning blueprint is not good enough. <laughs> Thank you.